Hey guys, welcome to the video today. In today's video, we're going to be doing an unboxing and review of the Autel MaxiScan MS309 OBT2 code reader. Um, we're going to get this hooked up to my Toyota Corolla. We're going to check out some of the uh, check engine light codes that come back and just kind of show you the process on how that works. We're also going to go through all the different features that this unit has to offer. So OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostics, and the 2 is a designation on all cars and light trucks model year 1996 and newer that were sold in the U.S., and they were required to have this port in the vehicle. So essentially, any 1996 and newer vehicles in the U.S., you're most likely going to have this port on your driver's side underneath your dash. If your vehicle was sold outside of the U.S., you're still more than likely going to have this port in your vehicle, but just take a look to confirm for sure. All right, so before we open this up, let's take a look at the packaging. Um, you know, here's the unit itself on the back here. Um, we got a list of features and functions that we're going to go through the website of the Autel company, www.autel.com. Um, you know, and just a basic description right here. Um, of what the code reader does so and I'm, I'm hoping inside the uh, packaging here we're going to get like an owner's manual that we can uh, take a look at so let's go ahead and get this opened up all right guys let's go ahead and get this packaging cut open here it's this clamshell stuff so I'm just going to cut the side off here or just trim around all the the clamshell portion of this so we can open it up There we go. Okay, so let's take a look at this really quick. Here's the code reader. Okay, let's set that off to the side and see if there's anything in here. There is. All right, guys, here is the quick reference guide. This is really important. Um, this has all the basic information you're going to need about the tool. Um, and it does tell you right up here, important before operating this unit, please read these instructions carefully. Use this unit correctly and properly. Failure to do so may cause damage and or personal injury and will void the product warranty. Um, number one, it's got a QR code for you to scan to go to their website. Um, and you can download the, the full user, user's manual. So make sure you do that and read through it and understand it completely before you use this. It shows you how to hook up your uh, device here. Um, it tells you about the tool and then has the for service and support, please contact us information at the bottom. So I always say this, it's really important to read user manuals before you use a product, um, you know, just so you, you fully understand how to use it um, and don't hurt yourself and don't damage the product. So make sure to read all, through all this stuff before uh, you do use the unit. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this unit out to the vehicle. Let's get it hooked up and go through each of the functions on it. Okay, guys, so this is my car, and I wanted to show you where the port is on my car. If you take a look at this, you'll notice that the top is uh, longer than the bottom, and the sides are angled. The OBD2 reader, uh, the connection can only fit on one way, so make sure you connect it the right way. And you can see on the reader here, same thing, you know, on the top it's longer, on the short, on the bottom it's short, and on the sides it's angled. Uh, so just make sure you connect it the right way. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and connect this right now, and we will be right back. All right, guys, you do need to turn your car to the on position, but don't start it. Um, you just need it to the on position so your uh, vehicle can communicate with the Autel OBD2 device. Okay, let's get a closer look here. Okay, so we can see uh, we got two different options. We can hit enter to go into uh, scan or we can hit the scroll button to go into setup. So we'll go into setup first. Um, we got languages, got a handful of different languages there. Um, unit of measure, we got English and metric. 
We'll stay with English for now. Um, contrast, where you can adjust the contrast of the unit itself. And then we're going to exit out. Um, so let's go ahead and hit enter now. We'll go ahead and scan the vehicle. So right now it's communicating with the onboard computer. So we'll give it a second to do that, or a few seconds. Okay, that didn't take too long. So it says that it found one code and then it gives you some information about the monitors there, uh, the different monitors in the onboard computer. Um, and then it comes into the diagnostic menu here. And we'll go through each of these um, options, but let's go ahead and start first with read codes. So I'm gonna hit enter. Okay guys, and with the codes here like P0420, catalyst system efficiency below threshold bank one, I mean, nobody's going to know what that code means unless you're a mechanic and do this for a living. So the best thing you can do is go to the internet, type in your code, do some research on it. You know, for each code, there is um, a handful of different things that could be causing that and then a handful of different fixes to resolve that. And there are a bunch of different codes out there. So um, that's where the internet becomes really helpful in researching your particular code or codes. So the code that pops up is P0420, Catalyst System Efficiency Below Threshold Bank 1. So that can be a lot of different things. Um, it could be my catalytic converter. It could be oxygen sensors in the vehicle, or it could be a leak in the exhaust system. Um, let's go ahead and go to the next one. P0125, insufficient coolant temperature for closed loop fuel control. Okay, before we talk about this code, take a look at the top next to the two slash three like this is screen two of three, um, you'll see a little PD next to it. That means that this is a pending code. This isn't a code that would have triggered the check engine light, um, but it does uh, let you know that it is something that could trigger the check engine light if it continues to be an issue. Um, and, oh, let's go back to that code really quick. So this code also can mean a lot of different things. It could mean that uh, I'm low on coolant, um, it could mean that there's a leak in the coolant system. It could mean that there's a thermostat uh, issue, all sorts of different things that can trigger this code. Um, and then it gives me the pending code for the P0420. So we're going to go ahead and exit out here. Um, we can go to erase codes and hit enter. And it says erase trouble codes. Are you sure? Yes or no? Um, we're going to hit no for now, but this is where you would erase the codes, um, you know, after you've made the, um, uh, you know, the fixes to your vehicle, um, and then see if the code triggers again. Um, view freeze frame. So what this is, is this gives you a lot of the information that was taken, um, like a snapshot in time when the trouble code was triggered. Um, so you can go through all these different metrics here, um, and it'll tell you when that P0420 code was triggered, um, you know, what exactly was going on with your car. And you could, you know, go to the internet and have it, you know, do some research, and maybe some of these codes would point you um, in a specific direction of why that particular code was triggering. Because for each code that triggers, it could be a whole lot of different things, you know. So um, this gives you that info so you can, you know, research it and see if it points towards um, a specific issue uh, that would have triggered that code. Let's exit out here. Okay. Okay, so we got the I am readiness here. So what this is, this is always good to check uh, before you go, uh, you know, get your car inspected at emissions. This gives you an idea if all your monitors are working and lets you know some basic information. So uh, like on top, it tells us the MIL status. Uh, MIL stands for malfunction indicator lamp or check engine light as most people uh, know it by. Um, you know, we can scroll through the different screens here and you can see which monitors are not uh, available or ap applicable um, and which monitors are okay. 
Um, and it just gives you an idea of, you know, if your car is ready to go through emissions inspection. So let's exit out of this here. We got vehicle info. So if we go into this, it's saying turn key on with engine off, press any key to continue. Um, and then you got your vehicle ID number, calibration ID, cal verification number, and previous menu. So we're going to go back to the previous menu. And then you have exit, uh, which will bring you all the way back to the um, uh, first screen there. So... So yeah, this is a nice little unit. It's handheld. It'll fit in, you know, a toolbox or a drawer and be there when you need it. It'll help give you an idea of what's wrong with your vehicle, um, you know, so you can have a better idea if you do want to try to, you know, tackle it yourself or if you wanted to bring it to a mechanic, at least you'll have an idea of what's going on with the car so you could get some uh, quotes on prices and stuff. Um you know, yeah, it's it's uh, a cool little unit and does exactly what you need it to do. So um, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys. I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.